good morning students let us start today's class we were revising the first module since yesterday today let us see what is markov source we had seen earlier that any particular source as far as its transmission is concerned it can be represented by means of a state diagram where can be different states and the symbols can have transition from one state to another state so in such a case each state will have its own entropy because in each state symbols will be transmitted based on some conditions as you already know any particular system can be represented by means of a state diagram and why is it called as markov source the reason why is it called markov source it is also called as markov source the reason is there is a transitional probability from one state to another state and then because of this transitional probability there can be a joint probability so here hi is the entropy of each state where pij is a transitional probability where n is the number of transitions and the joint probability is represented as pi and this capital h can be the entropy of the first order source so in such case the entropy of each state can be represented by means of summation of j equals 1 to n pij where pij is the transitional probability of the symbol from one state to another state pij into lg of 1 over pij now the entropy of the first order source can be given by the summation of i equals 1 to n of the joint probability multiplied by the entropy of each state so this way entropy of the first order source can be determined now we can have sequences sequences will contain symbols in the sense symbol can be a source alphabet a, a part of the source alphabet whereas we can send either a symbol by symbol transmission or we can have a sequential transmission that means again there also symbols will go one by one but a set of sequence can be sent at once starting from a given time duration now is it all right if we send symbol by symbol or is it all right if we send a sequence of symbols now for that question the answer obtained is already shown here g1 is greater than g2 g2 is greater than g3 g3 is greater than h where g1 is of the second order g2 is of the third order and h was of the first order let me come back to that equation later on let us revise this gn gn is the entropy of sequence containing n symbols average information contained per symbol in a message is also represented by gn so when a sequence contains n symbols the average information contained per symbol in a message now that is also called as entropy of adjacent source you can see here if the sequence is containing one symbol then the average information content per symbol in that message is larger if it is 2 it is lesser if it is 3 it is lesser what does it mean it means that the number of bits which you have to transmit per symbol in a sequence reduces when the number of symbols in a sequence increase because there is a transitional probability there is a joint probability in a source if the symbols are dependent on each other we have been giving the example of the word q q u e u e it has to be written as q there all these five alphabets in that word they are dependent on each other and their dependency is also defined by the probability of occurrence of each alphabet in the english language so for that matter as i have been telling you yesterday one book contains so many chapters each chapter contains so many pages 
each page contains so many paragraphs each paragraph contains so many words each word contains sorry each paragraph contains so many sentences each sentence contains so many words and each word contains so many alphabets so if this is the case is it a good idea to transmit word by word or sentence by sentence or paragraph by paragraph the outcome is it is a good idea to send a long sequence when we send a long sequence the number of bits that are required for transmitting that long sequence will be lesser because of the transitional probability and the joint probability as the symbols are interdependent now if the symbols are independent of each other this does not make any sense at all let us say in the english language if all the 26 alphabets are independent of each other then there is no point in transmitting sequences whether we send sequences or whether we send symbols after symbols it does not make any difference but as we know all the information is mutually dependent on each other right in a sentence the words are dependent on each other in the sense if a sentence has to be meaningful the words have to be arranged in such a way to make the sentence meaningful we cannot simply arrange the words as such so there is a grammar as per the grammar we arrange the words when we arrange the words sentence will have meaning that means we have to say that the probability of occurrence of these words is again dependent on each other there is a transitional probability there is a joint probability for that matter the conclusion here is now when there are symbols which are interdependent then that is when we call it as mutual information and when they are interdependent when we send a larger sequence then the number of bits required for sending that larger sequence will be less that is the final outcome of this particular expression so g3 is always better than g2 that way or g2 is better than g1 that way now the term summation of pmi lg of 1 over pmi is, is given the symbol h of s bar also hence gn will have another symbol h of s bar some books use gn some books use h of s bar so g1 is basically h of s bar g2 is basically 1 by 2 h of s bar squared this squared is simply simply a notation it is not actually squared it's a notation indicating the first order second order third order that way so when we discussed this markov sources later on we discussed how when we transmit a larger sequence we will have a less number of bits that we had uh, proved in some exercises also i just added one exercise here just for a refresher a source emits 26 symbols five of which occur with the probability of 1 by 26 Six of which occur with the probability of three bar fifty-two, three of which occur with the probability of one by thirteen, and the remaining occur with the probability of one by fifty-two. Now, twenty-six symbols. I took this example for the English language itself. If the source emits six hundred symbols per second, find the average information rate of the source. Now, we can find the source entropy by applying the formula summation of P A L G of one over P A. So we have five symbols occurring a probability with one by twenty six. So it is five into one over twenty six L G of twenty six. That is P I L G of one over P I. Then we have six symbols occurring with a probability three by fifty two. So six into three by fifty two L G of fifty two by three. Similarly, three into 1 over 13 lg of 13 plus 12 into 1 over 52 lg of 52 because after 5 6 and 3 totally 26 minus 5 minus 6 minus 3 is 12 so remaining symbols which occur with the probability of 1 by 
means it is 12 into 1 by 52 lg of 52. So when we add all of them, we get 4.498 bits per symbol. This is the average information content per symbol in the source. So now, as the source emits 600 symbols per second, for example, let us say your typing speed is 600 symbols per second, 600 alphabets per second. No, it is not for a human being, it is for a machine itself. So in that case, capital R or the information rate of the source is 600 into 4.498 is equal to approximately 2.7 kilobits per second. This is the rate at which the information is transmitted from the source. So you can see here, H is the average information content per symbol. So R is the total data rate from the information source. So that way we cannot say R is fixed. We can say per second it is 2.7 kilobits per second. But it doesn't mean that it is the duration of each bit is 1 over 2.7 is it so? It need not be so because H is what? H is the average information content per symbol by utilizing their probability of occurrence. Now whenever they occur, whenever the machine is typing the message, whenever these uh, symbols occur for transmission, it need not be that it can be constant throughout the time duration. It can be varying within. So on an average, we calculate entropy. And similarly, on an average, we calculate the information rate. This has to be borne in mind. So from now, from module 1, let us move on to module 2. By the way, to give the answer for my yesterday's question, even though it was a fundamental question, I had asked the question why sine wave is considered as the fundamental wave in our signal analysis. The answer is, let me stop. Sir, yeah, tell me. Sir, is it because uh, uh, the sine and cosine waves are bounded values like plus one to minus one and they move from like they extend from minus infinity to plus infinity and and there are no break breaking points like the the signal is continuous and mostly our signals are also continuous in nature if we want to make it discrete then we can sample it and i think only sine and cosine waves have these properties and yeah. they can be generalized yeah yeah you are correct your, your answer is from the mathematical domain. So, discrete or digital is always artificial. That means in nature, all signals are analog. Those analog signals we sample, then we quantize, then we encode, we make it into digital streams. So, whether it is discrete or digital, it is always artificial which human beings are making or engineers are making. But in nature, any sound for that matter or any signal for that matter is continuous. So that way your answer is from the mathematical domain where any continuous signal has to be represented by means of sine wave and cosine wave. That is fine. But let me write one signal here now. If I write my voice signal itself here now, it will be like this. Right now when I am speaking, if my speech is captured into the oscilloscope, you can see this particular waveform or sometimes it can be like this also. It can be like this also, depending upon a person's construction of the vocal cord. Different people will have different speech frequencies. Now in this case, you can see the signal is continuous. As long as I keep speaking, there is a sound signal that is being transmitted to you. The microphone picks up my uh, audible sound and the microphone converts it into an electrical wave 
and that wave is transmitted to you although by means of a digital communication now so actually when i speak it is neither a sine wave nor a cosine wave it is a continuous wave now fourier used the method where any complex wave now this is a complex wave any normally occurring wave is not a fundamental wave any normally occurring signal is a complex signal it is not a fundamental signal because the fundamental signal will have a constant frequency it will have a constant amplitude in that case it is not contain any information any varying signal will have information for example if i keep on singing now sa that is not information if i keep on telling that way re that is not information only for the first time it is information for you sa and re later on if it does not change at all there is no information which means if a signal has to be called as an information signal must be changing so when signal is changing any changing signal that way is a complex wave as such it is not a fundamental wave now how to represent a complex wave mathematically so that mathematically we can analyze the wave and later on mathematically we can uh, disturb the wave also or distribute the wave also or divide the wave also we can analyze the wave in parts also that is where fourier thought that let me have a sine wave as the fundamental component then using the fundamental component adding all other components called harmonics we can represent a complex wave by means of the sine function and cosine function that is the greatness of the fourier series now fourier thought that there is a necessity to represent a complicated wave by means of some fundamental waves so that it is easy for us to break up a complex wave into its own sub parts which are part of a fundamental wave for example my voice frequency is fixed now my voice frequency when it is fixed it depends on the construction of my vocal cord when my voice frequency is fixed now you can always recognize when i talk that it is my voice by recognizing my voice frequency let us say my voice frequency is around 400 hertz approximately i am telling you that 400 hertz is called as a formant in the sense that 400 hertz is a fundamental wave which is coming out of my throat but when i speak i am modulating my vocal cords i am using the tongue and the t the complete speaking apparatus is utilized for speaking now so in that case even though my throat is going to produce a fundamental 400 hertz wave because of the voice modulation because of the complete speaking process now there will be the fundamental wave will be modified by the movement of my tongue or the touching of my tongue to the palate or to the teeth or the usage of the lips or the vocal cord itself is vibrating in general the vocal cord produces vowels and the consonants are produced inside the mouth to tell about the sanskrit language k kh g gh ng then ch ch j j ny t t d d n t th d dh n p p b b m you can pronounce in your own way and you can find out where all these are produced k is produced at the guttural and p is produced at the lips it is called labial in between other three are produced t is produced when the tongue touches the upper palate t is produced when the tongue tip of the tongue touches the teeth that way just a minute let me continue 
I was telling about how speech is produced in the mouth. So God has designed such a beautiful mechanism where vocal cord will vibrate when the breath is coming out of the lungs. And when the vocal cord vibrates, it is always going to produce vowels. A, E, U, A, I, O. They are all vowels. Now when that is coming out, it is going to be modulated again inside the mouth by the usage of the tongue and the teeth and the lips. So in that manner, the speech becomes much more a complicated waveform now. So I was telling, if at all I keep saying, uh, e, then we can say that is a fundamental wave because it is containing a particular frequency. But again, the waveform of A uh will be different. The waveform of E will be different. Even though it is from the same vocal cord. Because the vocal cords are uh, subjected to different angular movements. So basically in nature, any signal, if it is fundamentally uh, of a single frequency, it is of no information at all. Information has to be varying always. If it is constant, then that is not information at all. So in that way, how to represent a complex waveform by means of a fundamental component that is even Fourier used, Fourier series. So I told you now about why Fourier used this mechanism and because of Fourier, now it is easy for us to represent a complex wave in terms of its fundamental components or in terms of harmonics also. But my question is why Fourier chose sine wave as the fundamental component? That was my question. Now you have told the answer about its mathematical part. My question is mathematical part comes later. In the beginning itself, why Fourier thought that sine wave is proper to be used as the fundamental wave. For that, the answer is slightly different. We have to go before Fourier, how they found out this signal. We don't know who found out, but they have found out the individual components of the signal. Now, if I ask you this question, why Fourier thought that way? You may say, we don't know, sir, only Fourier knows, right? But we have to get into the scientist's mind or the mathematician's mind to think how they get that idea. Now, let me stop sharing this PDF. Let me show you one particular slide. Now, you can see this slide. Just look at this slide and tell me what you understand by this picture. It's basically a sine wave, sir. Like, yeah, but at the left the, side, there is a circle. Yeah, with the change in theta, how the value is changing. Yeah. There are okay. GIFs also on how it is actually moving. Yeah, that means uh, when the circle is moving, circles y-intercept, if it is plotted, you can see the movement of the circle is going to result in a sine wave. In general, we think if the circle is represented like this, we think that this is semicircle and this is semicircle. We think that way. If the circle is cut into half, we will get two semicircles. But in fact, it is not so. If you look at this, you will understand it is resulting in a sine wave. The movement of a circle at each intercept, take that y and plot it with respect to x. With respect to time, let us say you plot the movement of the circle. Now that is going to result in a sine wave. So sine wave is the resultant of the movement of the circle. Next question is why circle comes into picture? Why we are interested in this circle? Now we know why sine wave is there. Sine wave is becoming a fundamental part now for any cyclic movement. 
but the question is in what way the circle is related to our signal analysis the answer is all fundamental particles in nature are basically spherical now when i speak let us say we are in the offline class when i speak when you listen in between you and me there is air molecule there are millions and billions of air molecules between both of us when two people are speaking to each other there are millions and billions of air molecules between you already know that sound travels in air sound does not travel in vacuum why because it is the causation of the vibration of the air molecules now when i speak when my vocal cord is vibrating because there is air inside my mouth also outside my mouth also the air molecules collide with each other in the same frequency in which my vocal cords are moving so all these air molecules are of what shape they are of spherical shape right when all these air molecules are of a spherical shape what actually is moving the air molecules who, which are spheres the spheres are moving when the spheres are moving the movement of the sphere results actually in a three dimensional sine wave when we call it as a circle we call it we write it in a two dimensional fashion with the x and y axis otherwise basically speech is three dimensional it is moving in x y and z axis also so in nature when all these fundamental particles are of spherical nature naturally when they collide with each other there will be signal formed and signal is also going to be of spherical nature but when the signal is plotted with respect to time it results in a sine wave that is the exact answer for the so, question yeah so but what is it to do with these air molecules or things sir shouldn't it be because the value of theta cannot exceed 360 if even if we take a spheric sphere yeah should it be the same way that is fine we can, we can do it with an ellipse also no in that case if air is not there can sound move no not not air alone sir yeah that's what how can we like link to different topics like that okay instead of a circle we can do the same with an ellipse also no? okay if it is ellipse same thing plot the, ellipse. yeah plot the ellipse in the same fashion with the same way be a sign it will not be try it out Look yes sir. my question is how like why would they choose something based on like nature like like uh, there are like since air molecules are spherical in shape that is why they chose all this and that is why it all happened like this i told you the complete physiology of how speech is produced Yes, sir. I understand. Yeah. Now, speech so, is it not natural? It is natural, sir. Yeah. So, I understood your explanation as like because yeah. in spe in air, speech propagates. So yeah. air is made of spherical, tiny spherical things. So yeah. that is why waves are generated. That wave is somewhat similar to sine or cosine. Basically. So, basically any signal is the movement of a fundamental particle even if it is a light also light is also made up of photons or energy packets <laughs> even an electron is spherical even an atom is spherical even a nucleus is spherical that way it, it could be a disk shaped also no sir some how, how it can be in nature do you find cubic shape uh, mm, disk particle? shape like, like elliptical shape elliptical shape is possible but it will not be a fundamental sine wave that is where fourier uses harmonics because they are complicated waves complex waves now i will tell you once again you may think it is a different topic it is not a different topic all are related to nature in nature earth is also spherical may be elliptical but earth is not cubic why earth is not cubic because earth is moving around sun moon is also sphere moon is moving around earth again they are all bound to be spherical because of their movement because of the gravitational forces 
so when you represent the movement of the earth also ultimately it will result in a sine wave only in nature because of gravity anything and everything is normally of a continuous shape it is not of a cubic shape why archimedes used pi here why archimedes used the number pi here pi is nothing but 22 by 7 why he used a number which is never going to end why we use this number to represent circle its uh, circumference or its uh, uh, area also reason is it is a continuous movement we cannot say it is part by part connected at every point in this circle when you go to the next point there is again an angle there we define it as 360 degree that's all for our mathematical needs we define it as 360 degree just like we define 360 days in a year approximately in the same way we define 360 degree 45 degree 90 degree the degree is going to be defined by human beings only otherwise it is continuous now think about the mathematicians and scientists who define in their own domain nature is much beyond the human intelligence also so when archimedes wanted to represent circle and its area and its circumference he had to use this symbol pi and he has to use the number 22 by 7 because it cannot be discrete but if it is a cube or if it is a square it is easy to represent if it is a cube or a square it is easy to represent but a cube or a square is always artificial you will buy an apple the apple is having a continuous shape now you take a knife cut the apple into pieces you may make an apple now as a cubic piece also but as such cubical apple is not available in nature all the fruits all the fruits which you see they are all of what shape they are of elliptical shape also they are all of cubic uh, sorry spherical shape also different shapes but you will not find any natural objects having cubical shape or rectangular shape or square shape that way right that way god has been making experiments in this manner along with gravity along with matter along with energies again if you say it's a different topic i should say nature is created by god only so yes, human being it's two to... different topics how can we mix both and come to a conclusion when we discuss fundamentals there is nothing called different topics when i discuss only information theory then i discuss only information theory that is completely digital but when i discuss the fundamentals like why sine wave there is nothing called different topics now if you think it is a different topic i will say it's a revision of the fundamentals only my question is what where when why how questioning will never end answers will never end until correct answers are obtained yesterday i told about isaac newton he asked this questions until he gets the answers keeps on asking questions why 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 until you arrive at the fundamental answer so when when we search for the fundamental answer topics will not be different all topics will come back to the same now you may say why are we why am i discussing god in our uh, technical engineering courses now i should say we discuss vocal cord we discuss nature we discuss fruits and vegetables if nature has to be designed by something beyond a human intelligence only right my own body has to be designed by something beyond my own intelligence that way when we go back to the root causes all topics merge into one particular topic only that is why yesterday i told initially it is bachelor of engineering or technology next it is master of engineering technology finally it is doctor of philosophy what is philosophy becoming wiser not just becoming intelligent that is the answer you may think i am discussing different topics but i am discussing the fundamentals why archimedes told eureka now you can understand now that is not a different topic because pi and e are related to all our signal analysis pi is a fundamental constant used by mathematicians e is the fundamental constant used by all us all of us engineers in so many places we use e power x e power minus x exponential 
growth exponential decay exponential charging exponential discharging when you discuss a rc circuit that is again a continuous shape only why do we use e there just to represent this continuous movement that is the answer now if you have any better answer please tell me i am trying to tell you the answer which i have found out in my own way now if my students have a better answer than this answer you can always tell it back to me i will appreciate i will thank you okay any other question you have answer to why only sine wave yeah yeah i told no i come up with a different answer yeah you can come up with a different answer which should again be related only to signal processing and moving of waves it should not yeah. be mathematical yeah yeah basically everywhere it is sine wave whole of engineering is making use of the continuous wave forms whether it is electronics or whether it is mechanical engineering wherever so you can find out and you can tell me the better answer if it is there okay so okay now you can look at this this is a beautiful animation which somebody had put it in the internet and i had taken it out you can see when the cycle is moving there are three cycles moving or let us say three circles moving or three spheres moving when they are moving when we plot the moment in the x axis and when you plot the radius of that circle in y axis you can see three different wave forms are produced now if you combine all these three then that will become a complicated wave form right now you can see three fundamental wave forms right with different amplitude let us say we go for a linear addition at each point and when we combine them it will become a complex wave form now this is the essence of fourier series a complex wave form can be represented in terms of its fundamental component along with the harmonics but again fourier series again is an approximation in the sense it is second harmonic third harmonic fourth harmonic that way it goes on it goes till infinity that way so if at all we take only second third and fourth for our approximation we are approximately going to represent a complex wave form we will never be able to represent the complete quality of the wave form when we take less number of harmonics for example when you have pi r squared when you have the pi itself as a never ending number we will never be able to represent it 100% by taking only two decimal digits or three decimal digits or four decimal digits that is where we say it is always approximate that is where we have a limitation using pi and e but we have no other better option that is why we are using pi and e so with this discussion let me stop sharing this slide and let me go back to sharing the pdf so now coming back to information theory we discussed some basics of our revision of the first module now let us go to the second module rather actually in my lesson plan i started with the source coding then i came back to channel coding so let me go to module 3 here we were discussing source coding in our sequence of lesson plan so basically in our communication system we have initially source coder then we have a channel coder later on at the receiver we have a channel decoder and a source decoder as you already know source encoder is going to encode all the information bits with the entropy packed in the sense information is transmitted out in the source code where there is a reduction in redundancy whichever is a repeated information that will be reduced in its number of bits 
in the sense we we already know that uh, the content of information or the measure of information is inversely proportional to its probability of occurrence so that way source encoder reduces the redundancy so that we will pack information into a certain number of bits and then we will send it so then hm cap is the symbol given for the average number of bits per symbol in the encoded sequence for the block size n you should always remember that this capital n is much larger than the number of alphabets also that way so hn cap is given as 1 over n summation of i equals 1 to q of ni into pi this is the average number of bits per symbol in the encoded sequence why are we finding out this hn cap that is to find out the efficiency of our source encoder itself so here q is the number of code words and n is the number of bits in a code which means each symbol has to be encoded into the number of bits by the source encoder in that way there can be variable length coding in general we always will have a variable length coding unlike the fixed length coding for example ascii code is a fixed length coding in the sense in case of ascii code always the number of bits is fixed but then we will not be able to reduce the data rate if at all we use ascii code so in information theory we go for variable coding for example my speech has to go into the mobile phone when i use a mobile phone for speaking inside the mobile phone there is a chip called vocoder voice coder now the voice coder will have its own algorithm and inside the voice coder it is basically source coding where my complete speech will not be converted into the respective fixed length bits to give you an example the regular pstn let me write it is 8 into 8 into sorry 4 into 8 into 8 4k let me use a different color in the landline phone whenever we convert speech into digital generally speech bandwidth is 4 kilohertz and each sample is quantized and encoded each sample is represented by 8 bits and this is the nyquist rate of sample 4 kilohertz is the speech bandwidth nyquist rate says that at least two samples have to be taken in a cycle so two samples have to be taken in a cycle that becomes 4k sorry i did something wrong here let me erase this 4k into 2 it is 4k into 2 so 4 kilohertz speech into 2 is the nyquist rate into each sample is represented by 8 bits so this is now 64 kbps 64 kbps this is with the regular land phone communication in the telephone communication telephone exchanges but in the mobile phone we cannot go for 64 kbps because in mobile phone our uh, data rate has to be reduced because it is a completely shared channel there is no uh, independent channel as such per subscriber so now the mobile phone will have a chip called vocoder which will use hardly 9.6 kbps or sometimes less than that instead of 64 kbps it is hardly on an average it is 9.6 kbps sometimes it is still less than that so that way you can see the bandwidth is conserved here in the case of digital communications especially with the wireless communication especially with the mobile communication so in the sense the source coder has to work a lot with the variable length coding not with the fixed length coding in the case of fixed length coding more number of resources are required whereas in case of a mobile phone we have to conserve the resources 
that is why we go for variable length coding in the case of variable length coding when each symbol will have a different number of bits we can find out the average